Hey everybody and welcome back to a brand new video on my channel. As always, I'm Jay and I am so freaking jazzed up to make another video. I know it's been quite a while since my last one, but you know, you can't help but be very excited when your hard work is paying off and you started getting some production value and getting new things like a new background. Yay! I know. I know, I'm probably the only one excited about this, but anyway guys, not the point. Today we're going to be taking a look at The Defenders because I finally finished watching the series. As a matter of fact, I've actually gone through the series twice already, and I've picked up on a lot of things to talk about. Uh, well, a handful of things to talk about, let's say. And overall, the, the Defenders series was very good, and I really appreciated it and enjoyed it. But uh, I know that I haven't covered all the Netflix series that had come out prior to this, except for Daredevil Season 1 and sort of Season 2. But... I'm going to be dishing out my thoughts on those ones with some light spoilers for those and the Defender series. So if you guys haven't seen any of this at all, you've been forewarned. So anyway, without further ado, let's jump into our Defenders discussion. So let's get this first thing out of the way. None of the series have ever been even close to touching how great the Daredevil show was. It's my personal favorite and it's great to see Daredevil done justice. And the fact that he's actually in costume, out of all the heroes, he's the only one to wear his costume, and it actually looks pretty sick and badass. Although in the first season, it did take him until the last episode till he got it. And the second one, he got a nice little helmet upgrade, which looks ten times better than that first helmet. I don't know what the hell they were thinking of. But anyway, the first two series of Daredevil were great. And what happened was, after that, you know, we got Jessica Jones, which was a, not a bad effort. It was very good, and then it just felt like it got bogged down after a while. The plot got very repetitive, as it would in most cases, uh, leading up into the Luke Cage and the Iron Fist series. But I think more of that is attributed to the fact that it's a Netflix show, and Netflix releases the entire season. And I find if you binge-watch a show... Uh, consistently and just like rapid fire the episodes you pick up on all the little tropes and traits and kind of the the bad parts but for right now let's just say that sometimes these previous series like Jessica Jones Luke Cage and Iron Fist they had too many episodes to work with and they could have just condensed it down to maybe like a handful of episodes uh, Luke Cage after Jessica Jones was actually a very good season I liked it a lot Midway through it, they killed off a really important character, one of the villains, Cottonmouth, and he was kind of one of the show stealers, and as soon as they killed him, it was like my jaw dropped to the floor. And of course, they kind of circled back and had the even bigger villain, Diamondback, come out with some new revelations and everything, like the fact that he was Luke Cage's half-brother and all these other things. But overall, it was good. It's just that little part right there kind of made things a little shifted and kind of bogged down the speed of the actual show itself. Then we have Iron Fist, the baby of the bunch and kind of the runt of the litter, if you will. Overall, I still like it more than Jessica Jones, but a lot of the complaints that were received by the show uh, definitely related to the fact that it was not really what the fans wanted. And Iron Fist kind of suffered the most because you know that potential that it could have had with like the cool kick-ass fight scenes that it could have been incorporated. It really fell flat on that, but also in the budgetary aspect, um, or maybe I don't understand if it was the writers or the budget itself, but they didn't show enough of what made Iron Fist Iron Fist uh, in the comics, that is, you know. The whole lore of Shao Lao and him facing the dragon in order to receive his powers. We really didn't see him do much, and it bothers me for the fact of Iron Fist only having one fist that actually is usable for his powers. If you know anything about the comics, you know that Iron Fist is able to channel his chi through both of his fists, and he has some kick-ass fighting and battle scenes. And it's just very, very upsetting to see that he's not in his full potential. Again, that could have been a plot device or a story device, but sometimes you might want to go for the gusto just a little bit, that way you can keep people entertained. Not everyone is like a fan of the comic book origins, like myself or somebody else that would tend to prefer these shows, but I do understand that they do want to try and make this, you know, a seasonal thing and they want to slowly build and develop the characters. But again, sometimes you get to fast track certain things because some story elements definitely bog down the actual show itself and kind of uh, hurt the show in the long run, in my personal opinion. But now we're talking about the Defenders. The Defenders shows all these four heroes coming together to form a super group and basically defeat the hand which we've seen in parts of Daredevil and Iron Fist as the antagonists. Uh, but going for this show right here, it was very good to see all of them in one moniker, and it was cool to see them doing a whole bunch of things. And uh, right now I'm just going to go through the kind of the good and the bad 
of the show itself and kind of give my little tidbits and thoughts about what really, you know, could have served the show better and what really brought it down. So talking about the good, the great thing about this show was the fact that we all get to see some of our favorite heroes under one roof and doing a lot of kick-ass stuff. The fight scenes were great because you got to see all of them kind of duke it out in their own unique style. And it was cool to kind of see the team dynamics, like have the kung fu guys with each other. So Matt was kind of a pseudo mentor to Danny, Iron Fist, and Luke and Jessica kind of shared that whole superhuman strength aspect. And they kind of already had a good rapport with each other as Luke was introduced in the Jessica Jones series. And they really worked well together. All four of them had a great time. You could tell they were really bouncing off of each other, but really good. Um, the chemistry was there, and again, you know, like I, I can't say enough, it was really cool to see them do their thing and, and kind of play off of each other and see what they could have done. Uh, then the next aspect, which was the story. The story was very interesting, and, um, you know, it's kind of a double-edged uh, double sword, if you will, uh, as I'll kind of mention later on in the bad things, but the story was very interesting especially the inclusion of certain characters that they brought back from previous seasons and kind of who the leaders of the hand were in this, especially Alexandra, played by Sigourney Weaver. I thought she was a very good addition to the um, villains and stuff like that that we've seen. She wasn't your typical villain, and of course she kind of rationalized a lot of stuff like villains tend to do by saying, you know, uh, she believed her ideals were good and she really meant for, like, the same things as kind of like the Iron Fist wanted, which was to get back to... Kun Lun and different things like that because um, if you didn't already know or guessed it by this season uh, would reveal it to you anyway the hand kind of stems from a bunch of offshoots that came from Kun Lun and kind of left and were kind of banished but also fought against them essentially and uh, they've kind of been waging a war against you know the pure evil of uh, the pure do-gooders of the world rather and it's kind of been one of their sole things of taking over the entire globe and having their hands in every single cookie jar, essentially. Uh, whether it's from, uh, you know, uh, cities, politics, uh, just global domination from within, essentially. They're, they're like Hydra, but they're more secretive and they're kind of a little bit more mysterious, in my opinion. Another great thing about the show was the fighting aspect. I mean... Like I said, coming off of Iron Fist, which had so much potential and was kind of lackluster with its fight scenes, you're coming off of that show into this one, where it kind of not quite ra rivals the great fight scenes of Daredevil and such, but it is kicking it up a notch, especially in the manner of Iron Fist getting his kind of fight scenes going on and stuff like that in this particular uh, series. He actually does a lot of damage, and he does do some pretty cool fighting, and the choreography was very good. Um, and I liked it because... Another aspect, which is Iron Fist makes sense in this world. You know, Iron Fist is actually very important and key in this world, and he's even more fleshed out about his importance and kind of, you know, he has a role so much more in this show, I feel, and he's kind of a more bigger key component than he was even in his own show, which is ironic, to say the least. But um, definitely a good addition. And, I mean, let's be honest, guys. Daredevil is always great, no matter what what show he's in, whether it's this one or the regular Daredevil show. I mean, this is kind of like Daredevil 2.5, if you ask me, because it's, it's definitely continuing in that same vein of Daredevil. And I feel like out of everybody, Daredevil has the most attention paid to him because he's a great character, but also because, you know, he's just... He, I, I feel like his character really needed to take the arc that this ended up going and taking him in because it definitely catapults for some good story directions, I would say, in Season 3 of Daredevil when it does come out. Now, I, I really did feel like Jessica Jones had gotten a lot better humorous lines in this show. She had a lot of wise cracks and a lot of quips, and honestly, I feel like her character suited really well as a foil to kind of all this craziness going on. Her and Luke ironically were the ones that really didn't buy into this whole magical ninja bs you would think that people who actually gain superhuman strength and power from experiments would actually believe that there is some type of mystical magical aspect to the world and not just scientific based stuff but that's enough about the good now i'm going to take it to the bad stuff about the show upon second viewing of the show there was just too much exposition and too much talking like i said earlier on Sometimes it's better to fast track certain story elements because otherwise it just takes too much damn time and you're wasting all your time on unimportant shit. Um, and, and it really suffers because the show is only eight episodes, which I was shocked at because usually the other seasons were 13 
uh, between 10 and 13 episodes, and I'm just like, well, why didn't they give 10 and 13 episodes to a clearly uh, a more important show that needed more time to kind of flesh out where it was going with its storyline and its characters? Iron Fist, Luke Cage, and Jessica Jones could have clearly been six to eight episodes and been a lot more enjoyable had they condensed what they were doing. Uh, again, uh, suffering from uh, a symptom of not enough action was a key part of this show as well. As much cool action as they did, they could have had more, especially with Iron Fist, who still only has one fist that lights up. Come on, Danny. Get your shit together and kick some freaking ass. What's the matter with you? Writers, get on it right now and give him his yellow and green spandex costume or something like that. You're, you're killing me over here. I need his costume ASAP. Uh, so I did say Alexander was a great character played by Sigourney Weaver, but I just felt like when they killed her off... It was a waste of time. You took her to that point and developed her so much, and you didn't even get to show her fight or do anything except for when she's basically incapacitated Electra. I thought that that was a ridiculous thing, and they could have done much more with her character. Stick was an asshole in the show. I'm going to be frank. And you know what? When he died, I kind of felt like he deserved it. He was a dipshit. He freaking cut his hand off, which was crazy, but then he gets his ass freaking killed because he was trying to kill Danny. And again... I'm ending on a Daredevil note, but Daredevil was only in the show for half the season. Because as we found out, Matt has not been Daredevil for like several months or something, and it takes him a few episodes of him actually getting into the suit and actually doing his thing as Daredevil. Uh, all right, guys. Well, that's all the time that I have for today. Again, I highly enjoyed Defenders. I highly recommend going to see the show ASAP on Netflix if you have not seen it. If you haven't seen the other shows, you don't necessarily need to see them, but it does help to kind of see where every character has come from before you enjoy this blast of awesomeness. I give the show a three and a half out of five stars, and I can't wait till the next set of series, including Daredevil Season 3. And then we're going to be getting a Punisher Season 1 pretty soon. Uh, I don't know if it's this year or next year. I'm going to have to double check on that. But no matter what, I am super excited for that. And guys, as always, thank you for watching. Click like, subscribe if you want. Leave all the feedback down below, even if it's negative feedback. And as always, guys, I'm Jay. Take care. Bye.